introduce myself by saying that my name perfectly personifies who I am, which is the opposite of what everyone would expect. I've got a British male first name, a Vietnamese last name, and I'm a black chick. None of it makes any sense. And it would be very interesting for you to know that I also have another secret that is very surprising, and that is I suffer from extreme anxiety and being overwhelmed. I'm talking, the room is closing in on me, I can't breathe. I can hear my heart beating in my ears. The lights are really bright. I just, it's hot. Get it together, girl. I remember the first time that I had that crazy, overwhelming feeling of anxiety. And it was about the first month into the first year of uh, my first year of undergrad. And I was a good student up until then. I was good. I made great grades, I got a scholarship, I graduated early. I was everything that every parent wanted to be proud of. Yet in that moment, I figured out a very important lesson in life. Being an achiever doesn't always feel like a win. And I did something that I think all of us would do in that situation, which is I called my mom. And you know what my mom said to me in that moment of panic, of crying, of breathlessness. She said, baby, you're drowning in two feet of water. All you got to do is stand up. And that was probably the most profound thing that I'd heard up until that moment. It was so simple. And I'm a visual person, so I, I visualized myself. And it looked so silly to me to see my very tall five foot two self standing in a two foot deep bucket of water and succumbing to it instead of making a swift, simple motion and just standing up in it to save myself. So I said, you know what? I'm going to picture this. Every time I freak out and I have one of these episodes going forward, and I'll be cured. Unfortunately, it didn't work. I found myself extremely anxious again when I found out that I'd been cast on a national television show for a national television network. I found myself totally panicked and freaked out and anxious when I also decided to stop being a solo real estate agent and decided to lead a group of over 350 agents across the country. I found myself totally panicked and anxious when I found out I was pregnant both times and even more panicked and anxious when they sent me home with these babies without a handbook. And most importantly, I'm anxious right now. I'm nervous right now. My, my hands are sweaty. I haven't eaten much this week. I haven't slept much either. If we're being honest, ever since I found out I had this talk, I've been a big ball of anxiety. Why would anyone want to listen to me? What I have to say? What can I actually say important enough to captivate and engage an audience for the minutes that I have here with you? I've been utterly stuck in feeling like I'm drowning in two feet of water months. So why is it and how is it that every time I reach a milestone in life, I panic and freak out? Why is it that every time I get there, that place that I've been chasing, that I've been trying to get to and trying so hard, why doesn't there ever feel like I thought there was going to feel? It never does. Navigating as a self-proclaimed high achiever and perfectionist, I figured out that my anxiousness and my anxiety and my panic is essentially an emotional false flag. And with going through life, I've had to learn how to cope with it. So here are a few concepts that I've really honed in on to help me do that. The first one is my vulnerability is my superpower. Being in real estate and in such a professional setting, perfection is everything. I know y'all have seen it. Y'all see all the real estate agents with their perfect real estate pose. They're on the billboards. They're on the business cards. It's all about perfection and creating a perception around who you are. Yet when I was in college and shortly after, I struggled with alcohol. 
that was something that I hid for a very long time. And I decided one day, as a professional in real estate that was supposed to be perfect, I'm going to blow the lid off of this thing. I'm going to share this vulnerability and just see what happens. So with a shaky finger, I made a post on social media, <laughs> and I hit post. And what happened after was nothing short of incredible. I had consumers reaching out to me saying, if they ever needed a real estate transaction, I would be the one that they use because I wasn't just a commodity anymore of a service. They knew tons of people that sold houses. I was a connection. My message and my vulnerability had resonated with them. And how many agents reached out to me and said, man, I've got that same story. Can you coach me? Guys, I made money and I gained things from sharing my weakness. And I found in that moment that my anxiety came from hiding stuff. If you stop hiding things and you use those vulnerabilities to build ladders, use those ladders then to reach others and connect them, you will find your people. The second concept that I learned to harness is I learned to embrace uncertainty. When there is nothing certain, anything is possible. I learned this right when I decided to leave corporate America and start a career in real estate. Y'all, I was scared. And I vividly remember having a conversation with my aunt, and it was full of what ifs. What if I do this? What if I embark in this new venture and I don't make any money? What if my lifestyle changes? What if, what if? And I remember what she said to me. She looked at me and said, yeah, girl, what if? What if you do it and you do change your lifestyle? What if you do it and you change it for the better? Why is it that it's so easy for you and for all of us to think of the negatives and the negative outcomes that can come from uncertainty rather than understanding that there's a 50-50 shot that it could be positive? So harnessing that concept has really, really helped me as well. And the third concept, and I want you to hear me really good on this one, y'all, because this applied to me a lot with coming here and, and talking to you today, which is... Don't allow the cost of success to bankrupt your ability to celebrate your wins. This is a win for me. About a year ago, I thought, you know, I'm doing a lot of speaking, I'm sharing lots of ideas, especially in a space that people don't quite operate the way that I do. I should share this on a larger stage. You know what? I want to do a TED Talk. And instead of celebrating the fact that I've even had this opportunity, I've been stressed, y'all. I've had the sweaty palms. I've felt tingly. I've been up at night. I've not been eating. And I've not celebrated this win because I've been so focused on the cost of getting here. Don't let yourselves bankrupt your ability to celebrate your wins with just simply thinking about the process and the cost that it took to actually get there. So one thing I'm certain of is that I'm definitely going to have more moments in the days and weeks and months to follow where I'm going to feel overwhelmed. I'm going to have them, and you probably will too. And the only thing that I hope is that in those moments you can stop and that you can hear my mommy's words and understand that you are drowning in two feet of water and you simply just need to stand the hell up.